viewers and welcome to Obsidian Soft. In today's class, I will teach you how to make a very nice piano app in MIT App Inventor. And it will also have a very cool feature in which we can actually compose music, record it and play it later. Okay, so let's have a look at the demo. So let's begin our class. Once you have opened MIT App Inventor, just start new project, name it Piano. In screen one's properties, make the screen orientation landscape and change title to My Piano, okay? Choose two horizontal arrangements from layout and drag and drop them. The top arrangement will be for our music buttons. The bottom arrangement will be for our recording buttons, okay? So let's rename it to music buttons arrangement. Rename the second one to record button arrangement, okay? Make the top arrangement, align horizontal center, align vertical center, height, is 70% width is fill parent. The record buttons arrangement align horizontal center, align vertical center, height is now 30% and width is fill parent. Upload the sound notes. I will give you the link in the video description from where you can download these sound notes for our music keys. Okay, so upload them one by one. So a note, B note. So I have uploaded eight note files, okay, from A to G and a high C note, okay. So that's done. Now let's make our music buttons. So go to user interface. We need to add eight buttons. So I'm going to add them one by one. Rename the first one to C button, BTN for short. Default color is dark blue, font bold, font size 20, height is fill parent, width is 12%. Now remember these properties because I will be using these same properties for all the other remaining seven buttons. So shape is rounded and text on it says C, okay? Add another button. This is our D button, so D, BTN, the color is magenta, you can choose your own colors, font size is 20, height is fill parent, width is 12%, okay, shape is rounded and text on it is D. So similarly I will add all the other buttons. As you can see that I have the B button left and the high C button left. So what I'm gonna do is that, as you know that we have a problem with our viewer that we are not able to see all the space that is available. And I know that there's space available, but it's not visible here in the viewer. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to add the second last button, that is the B button, and intentionally make it thinner. And I'm also going to give it a custom color because I want to make my own color. So I'm going to go to custom and just bring it up a bit, this bar. Choose a green color, make it a bit darker. And this is done. So the B button, font bold, font size 20, height is fill parent, width is now 5% because I want that there's some space available for me to drag and drop the last button, okay? So this is just temporary. So shape is rounded and the text on it says B, okay? And let me add the last button and I can see more space if I shift it to tablet size. Just drag the last button and rename it to high 
CPTN. Okay, and uh, let me put it back to font size because I was not able to see this part of the screen. So hi C and the color is now orange, bold, 20, fill parent height and width is 12%. So let's now start using the original properties. Shape is rounded and the text on it says hi C, which is HI short for HIGH. And now let's put our B button back to its original width that is 12%. So when we will connect it using the companion app or install it on an Android device, all these buttons will be shown fully and it will not look like this, what it is looking right now. So the music buttons are done. So let's add our record buttons. That is our record button, play button and our clear button for clearing the music notes that had been recorded previously. So let's drag and drop three buttons. Rename them appropriately. The record button, default color is black, font bold, font size is 20, height will stay automatic but the width will be 25%. Okay, shape rounded, text on it says record and text color is white. Similar properties for our clear button and our last button we forgot to rename it. That was actually our clear button. So let me bring it here. So this is our clear button and the middle button is our play button. So let's rename it. Background color black, bold, 20, width is 25%, shape is rounded, text on it says play, text color is white. Clear, same properties. Make sure that you press OK. Shape is rounded. Clear, text color white, and the background color is black. Okay, so this is done. Now we need to add some non visible components to our app. The first one is our sound component. We will be using a sound component to play our music notes and even our recorded music because the actual sound files are very short in duration and for short sound files the sound component is the best component and the player component from media sh should only be used for longer music files such as the background music. So we will be using the sound component drag and drop it here Okay, make its minimum interval zero so that there is no lag between the music notes when they are being played. Okay, and we also need a clock from sensors. Turn off its timer enable so that it doesn't fire as the app is started and we will be enabling it within our program. The reason for the clock component is that we need to capture the delay between each note being played when we are using the record feature. So we want to capture that delay. Otherwise, we won't be able to distinguish between two notes played in quick succession and two played with a one or two seconds delay. Okay, so you, we want to capture the delay and we will be using this delay, the difference between the time at which the two notes were played and we will be using the clock's timer to play the music notes with the right time difference. Okay, so the clock timer is very important. Also, we can optionally add a notifier from user interface. The notifier is used to show a message to the user. So we can use it to show a message when the record button is pressed that now all the music notes that will be played will be recorded. And we can also use it to show a message of clear to the user that all the music notes have been cleared. Okay. So the screen has been designed. So now let's work on the block section. So click on blocks. Now we have all these eight music buttons and we want to play a music note when they are clicked. So let's get their when button clicked event. So when the C button is clicked, what we want to do is that we want a, to set a sound component. Now, as you can see that we have used just one sound component 
and not eight sound components. So we will be setting the source within our program according to which button has been pressed. So I'm going to set the sound source. If I go down, so get the set block. So set sound1.source to A node, but this is the C button. So I'm going to change it to C node. And I'm going to again click on sound1 and get its procedure for playing its sound. So call sound1.play, okay? Similarly, I can do it for the D button. Choose D button here, change the sound file to D node. If I write exactly the same code for all the eight keys, the app will work perfectly fine. But if I want to make a change in how the music is being played, or if I wanted to do something else, I will have to make that change in all eight locations. And you can see that there's a this repetition of code going on. So what I can do is that I can have a procedure where I can construct the sound file name using a join, okay? So I'm going to go up and from procedures, get the first one, the one that does not return a result and click on the gear because we need to send it an input. The input will be a letter A, B, C, D that represents the note that has to be played. So just drag and drop it here. So I have the X input now. Let's change it to note. Okay. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to just drag this code here. But this code is for playing the C node. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to change this to a join. And I'm going to construct the sound file name here. So using the alphabet that has been sent from the button clicks of the music keys. So get the note that is A, B, C, D. And then join it with text that says note dot wave. And in this way, we will be able to construct the sound file name, okay? And then just call the sound1.play. So that's it. We just need to now call the procedure from all these buttons. So how to do that? Just go to procedures, call the procedure, and send it the correct alphabet. So when the C button is clicked, send it C, okay? Let's get rid of this, okay? And let's get rid of this duplicate this procedure, the call procedure, and change it to D because this is the D button. Now we just need to duplicate these click blocks, change it to E, and make sure that we are sending the letter E. Duplicate F, F. Make sure that it's capital because we have to construct the sound file name to be exactly the same as what we have uploaded. So yeah, yes, they are all in capital letters, so we have to send it capital letters. B, and last one, high C, and we have to send it H-I-G-H-C because that's how it has been named, high C note. So this will be joined with node.wave and the sound file name will be constructed correctly and then we will just set the source to that sound file and then play it, okay? So this is done. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, the eight music key click events that call the procedure and they will play the sound. So the piano app, the basic piano app is done. It will work if you install it on an Android device or if you connect it using the companion app to an iPhone or an Android device, okay? We will be adding the recording feature, that is when we press the record button, whatever music notes we play afterwards are recorded, are saved using lists, and when we press the play button, the music notes will be played in the correct order with the correct time difference, okay? So we will add that feature in the next class, I hope you like this video and do share my video with your friends and family and do tell them about my channel. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, kindly do so, so that you don't miss any of my app development or scratch coding classes. So thank you for watching my class. Have a good day and goodbye.